try to evaluate the following integral. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. So let's, let's work through this together. And if at any point you get inspired, always feel free to pause the video and continue on with it on your own. So the first thing that might have jumped out at you, we have a rational expression. The degree in the numerator is the same as the degree in the denominator. So maybe a little bit of algebraic long division is called for. So let's do that. Let's take x squared minus 1. Let's take x squared minus 1 and divide it into x squared, it's in a different color, divide it into x squared plus x minus 5. So x squared plus x minus 5. And so let's look at the highest degree terms. How many times does x squared go into x squared? Well, it goes one time. Let me write this in a new color. It goes one time. One times x squared minus 1 is just going to be x squared minus 1. And now you subtract this green expression from this mauve expression. Or I could just add the negative of it. So let me just take the negative of it. So it's going to be negative x squared plus 1. And we're going to get the x squareds. The x squared minus x squared is 0, so those cancel out. And we're going to be left with x. We're going to be left with x. And then negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So we have x minus 4 left over. So we can rewrite the expression that we're trying to find the antiderivative of. We can rewrite it as 1, 1 plus x minus 4, 1 plus x minus 4 over over x squared minus 1. Over x squared, maybe I'll do that in that purple color since I already used it as the purple. Over x squared minus 1. So we did one thing. We, we, now we have a lower degree in the numerator than we have in the denominator. And obviously this is fairly straightforward to take the antiderivative of. But what do we do now? It's not clear. If we look at x squared minus 1, its derivative would be 2x, which is the same degree as this, but it's not x minus 4. So it doesn't look like u substitution is going, to, is going to help us with this. So what can we do now? And now we can take out another tool in our algebraic toolkit, is we can essentially do, or we will do, partial fraction expansion, which is essentially writing this as the sum of two rational expressions that have a lower degree in the denominator. So what do I mean by that? So this term right over here, x minus 4 over x squared minus 1, we can rewrite that as x minus 4 over, instead of x squared minus 1, we can factor this. This is x plus 1 times x minus 1. So let's write that. This is x plus 1 times x minus 1. And when we think about partial fraction expansion, we say, OK, well, can we write this as the sum of, as the sum of something, let's call that a, over over x plus 1, over x plus 1, plus something else, let's call that b, plus b, over x minus 1. Can we do that? And to attempt to do that, well, let's, if we had to just add these two things, what would we get? Well, we would find a common denominator, which would be x plus 1 times x minus 1. And so you would have, and if any of this looks from unfamiliar, I encourage you to review the videos on partial fraction expansion, because that's exactly what we're doing right over here. But this would be equal to, if you were to add the two, your common denominator would be the product. So it would be x plus 1, it would be x plus 1 times x minus 1, x minus 1. And then, so the first term, I would multiply the numerator and the denominator times x minus 1. So it would be a times x minus 1, a times x minus 1, plus b, the second term, I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator times x plus 1, times x plus 1. And so what do we get? We, this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to ax, maybe I'll do this all in one color. This is going to be equal to, a, whoops, ax minus a plus bx plus b plus bx plus b, and then all of that over this stuff that we keep writing over and over again. Actually, let me just copy and paste this. So copy and paste. And I can use that over and over again. So we have that over that. Let's see, so now we can group the x terms. And so we can rewrite this as, so if we take ax 
plus bx. That's going to be a plus b times x. And then we have, and then we have a negative a and a b. So plus b minus a. And I'll just put parentheses around that just so I kind of group these, these constant terms. And then all of that's going to be divided by, good thing I copied and pasted that, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And so now this is the this is the crux of partial fraction expansion. We say, okay, we we kind of went through this whole exercise on the thesis that we could do this, that there is some a and b for which this is true. And so if there is some a and b for which this is true, then a plus b must be the coefficient on the x term right over here. So a plus b must be equal to one, must be equal to this coefficient, and b minus a must be equal to the constant, must be equal to negative four. Or if they are, then we will found an a and a b. So let's do that. So I'll do it up here since I have a little bit of real estate. So a plus b is going to be equal to one. And b minus a, or I could write that as negative a plus b, is equal to negative four, is equal to negative four. See, we could add the left-hand sides and add the right-hand sides, and then we would the a's would disappear. We would get 2b is equal to negative 3, or b is equal to negative 3 halves. And then a is, we know that a is equal to, a is equal to 1 minus b, which would be equal to 1 plus 3 halves, since b is negative 3 halves which is equal to 5 halves. A is equal to 5 halves, B is equal to negative 3 halves. And just like that, we can rewrite this whole integral in a way that is a little bit easier to take the antiderivative, or the, this whole expression, so it's easier to integrate. So it's going to be the integral of 1, 1 plus A over x plus 1. A is 5 halves. And so I could just write that as, let me write it this way. 5 halves times 1 over x plus 1. And I wrote it that way because it's very straightforward to take the antiderivative of this. And then plus b over x minus 1, which is going to be negative 3 halves. So I'll just write it as minus 3 halves, minus 3 halves times 1 over x minus 1. That was this right over here, dx. Dx. Notice all I did is I took this, I took this expression right over here, and I did a little bit of partial expansion, partial fraction expansion into these, into these two, I guess you could say expressions or terms right over there. And now it's fairly straightforward to integrate this. Antiderivative of one is just going to be x. Antiderivative of five halves one over x plus one is going to be plus five halves the natural log of the absolute value of x plus one. We're able to do that because the derivative of x plus one is just one, so the derivative is there so that we can take the antiderivative with respect to x plus one. You could also do u substitution like we've done in previous examples, u is equal to x plus one. And over here, this is going to be minus three halves times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus one by the same exact logic where how we were able to take the antiderivative there. And of course, we cannot forget our constant. And there we have it. We've been able to integrate. We were able to evaluate this expression.